All right. When you're ready, sir. All uh, right. My name's James Finnegan. Uh, this is with uh, customer number three three five six two. Uh, this is my uh, introduction to coaching assignment for RMI. Uh, looking at all different. Um, first, looking at learning objective one, which is determining effects of um, a coach. Looking at all different thing, the different um, abilities needed for a coach to be successful, and to have a good co go to coaching performance. And then uh, moving on towards learning objective two, look at my own coaching performance and how, how how I can affect people's performance in my own coaching ability, and whether that's successful towards their learning or not. And then moving on to learning objective three, which is uh, looking at needs of young people, um, whether they um, needs that they need to be successful, whether they're taking part or or not, or they want to. Uh, progress to be talented athletes, so yeah, looking at those three things. Mm. Alright, an introduction. introduction uh, right, basic coaching. Um, um, basically, wanting, basically, looking at wanting to improve abilities uh, with, with participants within your session. Um, looking at different aspects of how they can improve their ability, um, or let's look, try and look at um, changing behaviour, their attitudes towards session, your session, whether you, what your coaching performance, how that can, that affects part, participants. Um, I was looking at different angles of how um, your coaching affects them. So look at different things such as your philosophy of coaching, how how that can affect looking at um, communication skills, how you talk to people and in what manner you talk to them and looking at your motivational skills, how that can help people. And um, things such as changing behaviours and um, things like that. Um, sometimes these factors may need to be adapted, you might have certain you might go with certain things but if sessions aren't going too well or you're coaching different groups, you may need to change these to adapt sessions to uh, yeah. uh, moving on. Um, so coaching philosophy, uh, basically coach philosophy is just looking at um, how looking at your coaching principles, what your principles of coaching are, um, how, to, how that affects participants, whether they enjoy your sessions, how uh, your philosophy can make them better at that certain sport. Um, your philosophy, there's not no right or wrong philosophy in, in my opinion. Um, everyone has their own different philosophy, it works for a lot of different people. Um, take for example, Jose Mourinho, he's got a winning mentality. It, his philosophy is around winning, but he, he's got a philosophy where he gains the best out of every, every individual. What he, he, he likes to coach. Um, two different styles of coaching philosophy is an uh, autocratic style where the coach basically takes the lead. Uh, he's basically you, you individuals and participants lead to what he what the, that coach says and go followed by what he tells them to do and where to go. And there's also a democratic style where uh, a coach more listens to his participants' needs and takes on board. It's more a democratic theory where they both look to, where a coach looks to and asks the indivi individuals what they, need, may, what they may need to develop in that sport. Uh, in terms of my own coaching philosophy, uh, I, I look to, it's a bit of autocratic and democratic at the same time. I don't believe that what any coach can be just one. So my, my coach philosophy is when I need to be autocratic, obviously I need to tell people where to go, then I try to do that. Uh, and when I need to be democratic, really, then I try to enforce that as well. Uh, this probably could, this can be improved at times, as sometimes I need to get people to listen to me more. So I need to obviously put my emphasis on them listening to me and what I want them to do. Alright, uh, moving on. Uh, this is just a little quote on coaching philosophy. Uh, towards developing a coaching philosophy means pursuing personal wisdom 
philosophy helps us answer fundamental questions about what, why, and how things work. The key to developing a philosophy of coaching and life is learning to know and yourself and prioritising your competitive objectives. This is basically just saying that it's your own philosophy, you don't need to copy anyone else's philosophy. Uh, just try and take on board what, your, what you think the best way is to coach. Uh, moving, on, uh, lead, moving on to leadership in coaching. Uh, leadership, um, basically it's trying to change behaviour of performance where, where you can lead a session well to keep control of a session and keep, keep control of participants. Uh, if you can lead a session well then participants look up to you um, and see you as a good role model for them as you're leading that session well. Um, Sometimes when you are leading, uh, you're seeing that session isn't going too well, you may need to adapt to your session to, um, to get the benefits of participants and what you're trying to coach at that time. Because if your session isn't going too well, then sometimes that, that session might need to be adapted forwards. Um, if, if, if a leader can keep control of the session and shows it being a good role model, then um, participants will look to them and focus on that. Um, moving on to communication skills. Um, as being a coach, you need to be able to communicate well with participants. Um, um, if you can put across the right instructions, you've got a good knowledge of the sport that you're coaching, then the participant will understand what you, where you're coming from, what you're trying to instruct them to do. Sometimes communicating, you don't need to verbally speak to them. Sometimes you can use hand, hand gestures and, and pointing movements to where you want players to be in your session. Um, sometimes, it's better, sometimes talking in front of groups is a good way to communicate as, as you've got attention to everyone and you can tell them what you need to do in that session or sometimes you can do one-to-one -one where you just maybe take someone out for a minute and communicate to them what you feel they need to do or the mistakes they've made or to give them encouragement and tell them what they are doing well so it gives them confidence in your session to keep progressing and moving on. Um, in terms of my coaching, uh, communication is a thing that I think I can improve on. Um, sometimes in terms of being in front of a group, sometimes I do struggle with that and that's a sort of thing that, that I need to improve upon in my own coaching. As Sometimes participants don't fully understand as I need to project my voice more. Uh, I feel I'm, I'm more suited to leading smaller groups and one to one sort of things. As with my communication, I can get across my points and what I want them to do more, a lot better. Um, moving on, that's just a, um, a quote about communication. Effective communication is an essential skill for coaches for both providing feedback for athletes and articulating coaching strategies. However, developing the necessary skills and having access to the appropriate tools to facilitate that communication have always been a priority in sports coaching. But it's saying that you need a lot of different skills to be able to be a good coach, but it's not always being focused on in le people learning about coaching. So in the past, it's just saying that communication not being a factor what's being put across to coaches well as well as it could be. Uh, moving on to motivation. Uh, motivation is that's a thing that coaches need. Um, use of voice to motivate um, is a big factor as you need to get your points across and you also need to hear, hear your participants. Uh, need to motivate to get them to keep their high levels of effort in the session and keep persisting with your session. Uh, also, uh, target setting is a thing that you can do to motivate people. Say you're in a session and it comes to end, towards an end of a session and you can set goals for them to come back to your session the next time and they can go maybe go away and practice and it gives them incentive to come back to your sessions because if you can't motivate people to come to sessions then as a coach your performance is going to drop as you will uh, decrease in people wanting to come to your session. Um, if, as a coach you want to keep a uh, mentality where you want players to develop and keep trying um, and want them 
it's progress. Uh, but sometimes on the flip side, uh, motivating you can you, you can do too much sometimes because sometimes it can turn into shouting from coaches. As I've seen some coaches in the past, it turns motivating. It just turns into where you're just shouting at participants. So sometimes you need to just step away and not always be shouting. Sometimes you can just take the person to one side and give them some encouragement, which motivates them to carry on and persist. Uh, in my own coaching practices, um, my motivational skills uh, normally are quite good, I think, uh, as I can, I can get more people to um, put effort into my sessions and work hard. Um, sometimes it, I feel it's worked better for me when I, when I talk one one to one with someone to motivate them and set them targets when they come back to sessions as then they feel that they've got something to work towards and then they want to come back and show that the coach what they've been doing and learned. Uh, on to managing behaviour. Um, when managing behavior, the coach needs to be able to manage behaviour in sessions to be able to uh, keep to be able to keep control of the sessions. Um, if if you lose control as a coach, it reflects badly on your performance. As maybe you're a lower like maybe you're a lower down coach, and someone comes to see you, and if you can't keep control of a session by managing participants, then it's going to reflect badly on you. Uh, but if you if you can have an effect on the behaviour, then it can change their mentality in your session, as they might work harder for you. But also, it can help them in like everyday life. So if they learn good behavioural things in your sessions, like how to behave properly and behave around other people, then it can, then it can help them in everyday life when, say for, for example, they're going into work or school, then it, it can help them how they are around people from behaviour that you set them in your sessions. Uh, if you are a coach, then uh, looking the part and your appearance towards them is the thing that may make them look up to you. If you look the part and you speak to people in the right manner, then their behaviour will change towards your session. It's like speaking to them, not as though you're above them, but more speaking to them as, the, as though you're trying to get along with people and like, not, you're not the coach, you're just like more of a leader, then it can help them to behave better in your sessions. In terms of my own coaching philosophy, I try to manage behavior, I try to keep control of sessions a lot and um, turn up looking presentable all the time as then people look up to me and try and um, and then as as my session progresses, if behaviour is good then I can just leave I don't need to do anything but if behaviour is just changed from individuals I need to what I tend to do is try and pull them to the side, just grab a word to keep them in line and make sure they know how to do it properly. Right, and moving on to young people in sport. Uh, young people in sport, uh, coaching performance, uh, coaches need to be able to deal with uh, young people and know how to deal properly with young people in sport, uh, which sometimes it, it can be a challenging task for them. Uh, keeping people interested and also enjoying it at the same time but we also have the element of trying to develop their skills and fundamental skills of, of a sport so for example football uh, you try to develop their fundamental skills of like sort of first touch control stuff like that so if you can develop them their fun fundamental skills and keep their enjoyment as to wanting to come by because if you if, if they don't enjoy your sessions as a coach then it reflects badly on your performance because they'll go away, mum and dad will say they did enjoy that session, they, if they don't say they have, they have, then they're not going to come up and want to come back to your sessions. Um, how to communicate properly to individuals, so maybe try and get down to their level, so say you're talking to a group of young people, if you're down to their level instead of standing over them, then it looks a lot better as you're down their level, they respect you a lot more because you're with them more than being over them. And like that, you're right. Uh, um, if you can gain a good r relationship with in, uh, young people, but when you're when you're coaching their sessions, then it get 
gives them a lot more respect for you as they will work, give a lot more effort and work hard in your sessions instead of maybe messing around with other people. And, um, yeah, this is just a little quote on what I've got. Uh, Many children and young people are hoping for a uh, coach can help their development as performers and as young people. Young performers in this context, in the context of this resource, are children and young people who may simply enjoy participating in sport and may, or may also have performance ambitions. Whatever the talents or ambitions of young performers, co coaches need to be able to respond to them to ensure their experiences are sport are positive. What I'm saying is, coaches, uh, it's not all about wanting to develop the best athletes, it's also about getting people participating in sport so that everyone enjoys their sessions, not just picking out the best ones for abilities, it's making everyone feel on the same level and keeping their enjoyment, but as well developing at the same time. Uh, moving on, uh, development of young people. Uh, for young people to develop in, uh, in sport, they need good coaches to assist them. Uh, for, I, I, for young people who want to progress in sport, then coaches need to be able to give them opportunities and advances to be able to enhance their performance and their ability in sport. Maybe sending them other places to, to uh, maybe higher, co higher coaching places. For example, play football, maybe if you're doing the, in, doing a uh, Saturday morning session or something, and maybe you see someone who's got good ability who maybe could progress, maybe put them on towards more than they need to. Um, um, obviously, if, they, if you want them to develop, uh, then your standard of coaching needs to be of an eye, eye order. Uh, this reflects on your coaching performance. If you can coach to a high standard, and your sessions are of good quality all the time, and you can develop good athletes into progressing in that certain sport, and moving on, and maybe to higher things. Um, right, uh, so for my conclusion, uh, basically just overall coaching is something which is needed in sport. Uh, people need coaches to help them develop and progress through sport, whichever sport that may be. They need coaches to be able to give them values. Uh, people do sport sometimes just to get values in life and coaches help them <coughs> to do that and gain respect for themselves and feel healthy about themselves. Um, coaching is looking at all different aspects of how, how you can progress, how you can progress your own coaching performance to progress to an higher level. If you can keep all those things and you can keep progressing then you, you can get to an high standard of coaching. Um, thanks for listening. Uh, any questions? Thank you very much.